Okay, so this is going to be, as the name implies here, an Action Script 3 menu course. It's obviously a course I uh, could have taught a couple years ago when um, uh, Flash 3, CS3 came out. We're now up to um, CS4, and, and kind of the good news here is uh, apparently with Flash CS5, we'll still be using Action Script 3. Uh, so at least this uh, course won't be outdated sooner than later. And uh, why did I teach, uh, hold off on teaching a, a, a basic course like uh, ActionScript 3 menus for so long? Well, it's just not as fun as uh, things like video and, and all sorts of graphics and galleries and, and whatnot. Uh, because we are going to be kind of sticking to uh, just displaying text. Um, in a menu format and uh, at first this is going to be very basic so you don't need to know any action script and it'll also be a good starter course um, especially if you don't know any action script already because you'll learn um, with that in mind or at least I'll have that in mind that you might not know anything at all and then um, as the uh, course progresses we'll get um, quite a bit uh, more advanced and we'll kind of uh, end things with uh, using XML to uh, populate uh, your menus and in between then I have kind of highlighted out here that we're gonna uh, be doing some obviously animated menus, um, hovering them, uh, menus that slide around, things like that. Uh, we'll get into using the uh, component. Uh, there is actually a component for uh, doing menus. And uh, we'll even touch on some keyboard uh, control for navigating. And also the mysterious right click. If you have ever noticed that you can right click with the uh, keyboard or with your mouse and you get at this little pop up and we'll talk about how to um, change the default for that. And you can also use that as a kind of uh, navigation. So let's get into the most uh, basic stuff right here, which is aptly titled Simple Menu Start. So I'm going to open that up. The logo should look familiar. And one of the first things we are going to be doing here is playing around with text, but uh, even within that, there might be some uh, tips that you haven't yet stumbled upon. Uh, the first one here will just be uh, let's take a um, Let's grab the text tool and let me actually reset this back to what it's probably going to be set for you guys by default. It'll probably be up in a size like this. And uh, me, you want to make sure that you're not writing black text on black if you are following along with um, my stage background, which is set right here. If you just if you don't have anything selected, stage. Uh, let's type text out here. Okay, this font uh, looks it looks okay like that. Um, it tends to look a lot bigger. Um, or a lot better at a bigger size when you have this uh, anti-alias for animation on. In fact, you can just keep zooming on in here and you get to experience the beauty of uh, fonts and all their enlarged greatness. But we are going to make a very tiny font because that just tends to be uh, one of the trends these days in uh, creating a kind of cool website uh, for and uh, within that a, a cool menu. So let's go and start this back over here. I'm going to grab the T one more time. Uh, this time I'm going to be sure that it is set to a size of 11. Uh, and this is going to be uh, Verdina. Okay, and for right now, go ahead and uh, stick with this font so this actually works for you. And then we're going to take the anti alias off. Going to set this down to bitmap text. And now we'll just write something like cartoon smart rules. <laughs> and uh, the letter spacing is a bit high. Let's go and set that back to about zero. Okay, hopefully the uh, screen capture software here is showing you um, that this looks pretty good. Okay, it's very um, kind of it's got a kind of crispy look to it. Okay, there's no anti-aliasing going on. Now, if I were to duplicate this, okay, I'm just gonna copy that down one below and set this to uh, anti-alias, or let's see, let's set it to that one. Okay, do do you see the difference there? And actually, maybe I can zoom in and point it out too. Um, the, the font is getting smoothed out, okay? So those vectors in there um, are obviously a lot smoother than what are just basically pixels right here. So um, that's another good way of describing uh, what that um, bit mapping does is just gives you just a straight up nice uh, pixel font. So let's uh, delete that out. And I want to show you guys that um, there are also ways that this can get a little bit messed up. Although it tends not to happen with this Verdana, but um, I'm going to show you a font where you absolutely have to be uh, viewing it at a, um, a whole integer value. Okay, so you saw how I just took that off from 151.5 uh, to 151. Um, no difference with this Verdana again, but let's go and type out with another font. Okay, let's switch this to, uh, let's try FFF Professional. 
if I remember right, this is a font that is doesn't have a lowercase to it. Let's switch this up. Does not rule. How about that? Okay, uh, let's take this down to eight. That looks mighty nice. And well, you know, I might have been wrong about um, at least this one particular font. Uh, again, I was going to say that you you have to have a uh, a whole integer value, uh, but we're looking at a decimal value for the x location. Uh, but I would go ahead and stick with, uh, if you do get these placed out on the stage and you see them fuzz out on you, it, it's more than likely going to be uh, the case where you just need to uh, bump them up to whole integer values. And in fact, that's even something that um, the website, uh, this FFF stands for fontsforflash.com, that's even something that they uh, mention quite a bit in their uh, user guides here because they are particular about uh, wanting to make sure that you see those nice pixel fonts uh, looking their best. Okay, so let's uh, take this off. We'll just go with Verdana because uh, I'm pretty sure everybody has that. And we are now going to create a menu finally after about five minutes. All right, so first thing to do is I go ahead and select uh, the text. In fact, you know what, let's, um, let's turn this text into something that makes a little bit more sense, like portfolio. I'm sure many of you are going to be showing off portfolios. Go over here to convert to symbol. Uh, for most of you, F8 it should also work for that. If you're on a laptop, you might also have to hit um, Fn and then the F8 button. And we'll just call this uh, menu item one. We're going to uh, leave this as a movie clip. All right. And now we're going to select it one more time, convert it to a symbol, and this is going to be menu one. Okay. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with converting things to a symbol, we basically kind of uh, encapsulated uh, uh, this this text into its own uh, little unit that uh, we could pull out of the library now at this point. Uh, if we were to double click inside of here, and actually before we even double click in, uh, notice that uh, there's that name that we gave it right there. Okay, so now if we were to double click inside of it, you'll notice that uh, there is the name of the first symbol that we recreated, menu item one. And then if we were to double click one more time, and you'll notice too, every time that we double click, we kind of descend further down and it's uh, noted for us right there. Now we're back to being able to edit uh, the original text. So let's call this a portfolio link one. Okay. If we want to jump back up here to the main menu and another get, a good indication that that's happening is that that will no longer be grayed out, okay. Um, uh, and actually, let's show you guys the library one more time, or actually at all, before I explain kind of the advantages here to uh, putting things inside of symbols. Uh, looks like our library only has a couple items. One of them showing up quite big there. Okay, so uh, here they are. Um, they're kind of now a little bit more like reusable artwork too. Uh, again, since I've kind of put them in their own unit, I can drag this guy out. Uh, a whole bunch of number of times. Of course, it's just going to be the same uh, symbol over and over again. And if I were to edit one of these, I would also edit all of them. Okay, it's just how that works. Notice how I put two in there. Now it's two, two, two. And we will talk about uh, the best way to uh, kind of copy those or duplicate them. I need to be sure that I use the word duplicate there because just copying them makes only a copy of uh, that symbol doesn't make a unique version of it. But we want to take advantage of uh, that fact right now because when we're going to go set up our uh, menu, we don't want to go and do the same steps over and over again uh, for every menu link because you got to figure that um, on your menu, you're going to want the same things to be occurring for every one of the links. Okay, so if you want to show uh, a highlight over the word or underneath it. Um, you're going to want that probably to occur on all the links. Uh, same thing if you're going to be playing audio, you want that to occur uh, for every link. And then we'll go about changing uh, the text in each of them. Okay. And if you're not familiar with doing things like this, you'll realize there is a true method to this madness. And uh, you know, I was about to copy that out, but let me go do that the slowest way possible. Let's go over here to copy, and then we're gonna go uh, paste in place instead of paste in center. If I did paste in center, it would just put it in the middle of the stage. Paste in place just puts it right on top of the uh, symbol that you're copying from. And that way too, you can hold down the shift key and press one of the up or down arrows and then just kind of nudge it around like that. It's just a nice easy way to uh, keep things lined up. Uh, I don't actually need to uh, 
go to paste in place again because it's still in the clipboard and 